Okay, you are on the Thunderhawk for FC09 for the Samsung Epic 4G. Uh, this installation method should be translatable to all future gingerbread versions. Uh, this one is as of June 1st, so we're going to scroll ahead down. You can first see the screenshots on the website that I assume brought you to me. Uh, the XDA forum page has a little disclaimer on the top. Uh, you can read that at your own will. I have it in a very carefully laid out method, disclaimer screenshots. We've got the uh, TouchWiz lock screen, AOSP lock screen. You can see the uh, generic installation, the blackish theme, my professional blue is what I generally call it. It's just a goofy name I gave it. Uh, if you move down, you'll see the standard features that come with the 2.36 uh, hotspot mod, power mod, uh, included apps for the light version. Uh, full version apps come with the light version apps as well. Uh, it requires a rooted Epic 4G on one of these two Clockwork mods. And if you scroll further down, you'll see the download link. I've also included a barcode scan uh, that'll bring you straight to the download page. And all of these links are available on my website, which if you click, they bring you straight to. Uh, pretty much the same information. It says on the top, official build. I only will delve in official builds on XDA. Uh, same information. You come down here and you've got the install instructions are broken down by important and optional. Requirements are obviously optional. Pre-installation, you could convert it. You may need to root it. You move on down to the installation steps. Uh, step one, backup. You'll want to choose how you're going to install it, which is just what we're going to go through. Uh, you'll go into Clockwork Mod, and it'll apply any of these methods. Uh, optional customizations are available below. If you don't really know what they are, you probably shouldn't try and mess with them. But they're relatively straightforward, uh, as well as the light full switcher. Most people are going to want the full version. At those links are all in the optional customization. Uh, this post installation steps and important notes you should read before you move on. So if you scroll down, these are the actual download links, as well as old versions and a change log. And the change log will give you the date of the recent version, and they'll always be in the download section. And the old ones will not necessarily contain all the versions I've ever created. So you just download it straight from there, and that will provide you with the files that you need. Okay, this is going to be the audio for the clean install. Um, so I started off, as you can see, on the People's ROM 2.2. It is the latest version as of, I think, uh, May 5th. Uh, you can see all the, the app drawer, the toggles. Uh, the video quality is not really playing very nicely with me. It's kind of bright. We'll go under About Phone. If you scroll down, you'll see it is the People's ROM, in fact, version 2.2 uh, on a Samurai kernel. So just anyone who's managed to make the people's ROM work should be able to make my ROM work, so that's what we're going to prove right now. We'll boot right into recovery. Click OK for reboot. Rebooting. Give it a moment. This is mostly a proof of concept combined with the installation step. Again, it's pretty simple. It installs just like any other ROM. Uh, some people seem to get hung up on the customizations. I've tried to redo the website to sort of uh, put them in their own segment where it's easier to tell. Uh, I may make a video on how to run that properly. Uh, again, here's the People's ROM splash screen. Uh, the customizations are really, you just modify a file that the ROM will create without your help. So, for a fresh installation, we're going to go down. Uh, we're on 5.0 Clockwork Mod Recovery MTD. So we're going to go ahead and wipe everything. If I can get it quite right. There we go. Alright, we'll click yes out of the thousand no's. Uh, wait a moment while well, it formats. There we go, everything's formatted. Now we're going to go to install and update. Alright, install a, uh, a zip file. Uh, I keep mine under a very tight knit folders usually, but for now it's just on the root of the SD folder. So this is uh, 5.1 Thunderhawk FC09. Again, this is the Epic 4G. If you've been watching this video this long, you ought to know that. Uh, so we'll start the update. Here's the uh, random ROM splash screen will come up. Again, there you can see is the Thunderhawk V, Roman numeral 5. 
Uh, it'll go through and detect that you're not on an incremental version. It will see that this is not a version of my ROM, and it will proceed with the entire installation, beginning with formatting the phone again on top of you and formatting it. Uh, it's just good practice to format before you do a clean install, regardless of whether the phone does it on its own. Uh, I just make sure it's clean, make sure the ROMs can perform uh, properly. So now it's installing all the files, it's gone through everything necessary, it's checked the formats. Uh, it'll check to see if you're on MTD or BML. Uh, for those of you who don't know, BML is EXT4 or RFS. The phone comes from Samsung formatted. RFS EXT4 is a conversion most of us has done, or the ROM has done it for you that you may have installed. Uh, it's a faster, it's uh, more commonly used among Linux. So the ROM installs relatively quickly, that took all of maybe 30 seconds. I wasn't really keeping track. You can check the time on the video. Uh, we'll restart the ROM. You just click the little reboot system now. Uh, you'll be greeted with the Samsung splash screen, followed by the random ROM splash screen, uh, courtesy of B. Bellos. Uh, he was very nice enough to inject that image into his kernel, I, the shadow kernel, for those of you that don't know. This is the MTD version. I currently don't have, but there will be eventually a, a BML kernel with my splash screen in it. Again, courtesy of B. Bellos, and there is a separate one for the Serenicity coming as well. Uh, the Serenicity ROM, for any of you who might be wondering, installs pretty much the same as this. It uses the exact same installation scripts. It even has some of the same customizations. Uh, they're just slightly less acknowledged on the website. Uh, it's meant to be simpler. If you want them, they're there. If you don't, they're not in your way. But it's built on the same files, the same system as the Thunderhawk 5. Uh, so that's why it's called the Serenicity Series 5. So now we'll wait for to rebuild the cache. Now again, uh, the rebuilding cache is something that does after you flash themes or ROMs or in general. Uh, on a fresh ROM, it doesn't really need to, it's not really rebuilding, I guess it's building in the first place, a cache of all the apps. Uh, so, so there's the Sprint Optimizer, again, now we are on random ROM FC09 officially. You can see this is obviously my theme, the Sprint Connector is all ready to go. I use Launcher Pro, TouchWiz Launcher has been included just for security reasons in case you accidentally wipe. And uh, when you load up your phone, you'll suddenly have no launcher. So I recommend Launcher, I've set up Launcher Pro. But TouchWiz Launcher is just there. You can see the after is all good. I'm going to go into Settings, My Random ROM 5.1, FCO9 Custom Kernel. I use Modem EL30, just personal preference. Uh, I'm place down a widget. There you go, a Task Manager. Uh, not on Auto Kill, I just use it manually. This kills everything just as if you went into Task Manager and killed them separately. See, it's pretty smooth. Media scanning is uh, finishing up ahead. It's all looking pretty good. I'm going to put it straight to silent. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so what we're going to take a look at is using my setup with the EL30 ROM, so you know this as the Thunderhawk version 4. Uh, it looks awfully the same, scroll the touch widgets on the top, uh, so you're going to go into File Explorer, you can see it's out of date, so it's asked for the update version. Uh, obviously I've got a lot of folders, so we're just going to go to the Clockwork Mod folder, you have this if you've ever made a backup. We're going to open up the options file which is part of the customizations. You can see I've got the light version set to no, advanced power set to yes, that's good. We're going to delete that as a proof of concept that the full version does not need that and it will default to all of the standard values without the customizations being needed done. That way all you have to do is flash this 5.1 file right here. It'll be good to go. Now this is a program I include, Clockwork Manager. And I don't know if it's up to date or not, but it works just fine. So open it up. It will scan your SD card for the, uh, well, it just so happens to be media scanning because I just deleted that file. So that's a little annoying. Um, give it a moment. <laughs> Stupid media scanner. Anyway, it pulls up all the zip files. You can also browse by folders down below. 
Uh, so we're going to flash the 5.1. This program is convenient. It opens it right back up to the Clockwork mod. It will flash the ROM, and then it'll reboot all on its own. This is a great way to flash any themes, any fixes, anything straight from the ROM. Uh, you don't even have to turn off, no three-finger, nothing. And you can see it opens it up. It's trying to open the update. It takes a moment for uh, bigger files. Here it comes. There's the uh, splash screen for random ROM. Uh, it's not exactly the best quality, but you can tell right there it says uh, version V. So first thing it does is it initializes. It'll check your build prop, and it will be able to tell if you need a incremental or a full install version. Uh, so in this case, obviously, this is going to be the incremental installation, since we're installing it right over my ROM. So since it sees that it's the most recent version, uh, Thunderhawk 4, it's going to go ahead and install Thunderhawk 5. And all it's going to do is swap out the files that were updated. So rather than install everything all over again, it identifies, or I've already identified to it the files necessary, and it, as you can see it only takes a matter of seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds maybe, to flash just the files that have changed. Uh, you can see the new splash screen from the kernel, the official FC09 kernel, for MTD that uh, B. Bellos was nice enough to provide for me. Uh, he'll also be creating one for the Serenity ROM and the BML versions. So that'll be the splash screen that pops up afterwards. You can always flash your own kernel. That's the great thing about the way Android works. You can flash whatever kernel suits your fancy. It's really, it's just uh, that easy. So the ROM only took a matter of seconds to install. Uh, as you know, MTD, for some reason, is not the fastest starting way to run the Epic 4G, but once it turns on, it's usually pretty good. This is obviously taking a little longer because it just wiped uh, your cache. It's a standard procedure no matter what you're installing. The cache usually gets wiped. That way the phone is going to rebuild its apps. It's going to pull them back up. So then you'll see the... Uh, also mine was the green theme, which is only partially there because I haven't created yet the green theme. I expect it soon because I miss it on my own phone. And if I get some time, I will finally make the red version, which also has a red helix animation to match it. Kind of nice. Uh, so we'll sit here for a moment while it rebuilds, and then it'll be good to go. Alright, so after it's finished rebuilding your cache, your screen comes right back up. It's right where I left it, my default wallpaper. Uh, I always have to wait for the media scanner. Here is the Sprint Connection Optimizer. It's new with the FC09. Uh, again, it's the most recent version. There is an FC19, but that's a beta version, not officially released. I no longer delve in the unofficial releases, just due to the issues. And you can see it's now FC09. Uh, don't mind the system update warning, that'll go away. Uh, if you go under settings, my random ROM, scroll down, you can see there's the latest version is 5.1 and it has a FC09 MTD kernel. I personally run the EL30 modem still. Uh, there's all my apps are still there, the launcher page is working, launcher drawer looks just fine. Phone opens up. Everything just the way it should be, just the way you'd expect it. Music still runs, use my little task killer. Almost 200 megabytes of RAM, so we're pretty good.